I want to take you through our strategic review process, but I will touch on the year-end financials. I have David Cowan with me today, who's the CFO. So if there's any financial <coughs> questions later with I will just pass them straight across to David to answer. First thing is I would like to just recap on what we do as a business. Um, what do we do? We are a global packaging solution provider. We operate, previously we operated under two divisions, one called packaging machinery, uh, the two business uh, focuses there, Moldings Technology and Langan. Moldings Technology uh, works mainly in the pharmaceutical or works in the pharmaceutical sector, offering feasibility studies, concepts, and packaging solutions to pharmaceutical, um, pharmaceutical packaging issues. Langan is a high-speed packaging solution provider for cartoning. Um, in the secondary packaging, this is put in product that's already filled into boxes, cartons, so typical example of that would be chocolate bars, and you'll see some other examples later. And that represents just over half of our business. The other part of the uh, Moldin's business is the instrumentation and tobacco machinery. This is uh, nicotine delivery. It's all about cigarette production and testing. The legacy business you'll know well is probably uh, Moldin's tobacco machinery. This is uh, making and packing of cigarettes in the medium vol uh, volume uh, sector, which is about 10,000 cigarettes per minute. The maximum speeds are 20,000 in the industry. Um, we're in the sort of mid-sector now. Cerulean is a test and instrumentation business. This is uh, line-side testing of cigarettes to make sure they comply with the, uh, the business's quality control um, standards but also the reg regulatory analysis of those cigarettes to make sure they comply, comply with the uh, FDA in the US and the other regulatory bodies. So two parts of the business, just to give you that recap. So part of the strategic review, when I joined the business in June, I was asked by the board to look at, uh, to look at the business, undertake a full strategic review. Um, <clears throat> that was kicked off by inviting 25 of the senior leaders from around the business together to sort of share a couple of days uh, working on where are the growth opportunities, what are the, uh, the benefits of the business, what are the differentiators of our company um, from their perspective. So I have to say that was very enlightening for me and it reconfirmed the fundamentals that we're in some very attractive markets. We have a great portfolio of customers. You can see just a small selection across the bottom there. We have a, an amazing array of different uh, engineering solutions and capabilities that we can bring to a customer. And we have some very open and engaged people, over 100 qualified engineers, and these are bachelors, masters, and PhDs. So the business has got some very, very sound fundamentals. The result of that, we came with a strategy 2021, one Molins, and I'll, I'll explain more about the details than that, and set ourselves some ambitious targets of 10% uh, compound average growth over the strategic period, uh, and a 10% ROS over the medium term. So, I'll come back to the details of that better, but for me, absolutely reinforced by fundamentals. In terms of the financials, we didn't last year, 2016, uh, reach the, uh, the expectations that we had for the business, but nevertheless in the second half, uh, there was a, an upturn in the order intake. So overall, 20% increase in orders over the year from the previous year. We ended the year with a 40% higher order book than uh, we started the year, so that all bodes well for a good trajectory going into 2017. We had a good cash generation, even though the operating profit wasn't, uh, wasn't as we would have expected, and that was uh, based on converting working capital to cash. And these are tobacco machines that we had in the marketplace and in our inventory that we needed to get out there and get sold and recover the cash for those machines. We've already done some, uh, in 2016, some uh, right sizing of the business. This was mainly focused on the packaging and machinery business, taking some headcount costs out of there, some low hanging fruit, as you would call it, resulting in uh, a decision at the end of the year to not pay a dividend on this occasion. Although we are mindful uh, that the investors will be, uh, you know, we, we want to return uh, dividends to the shareholders over the medium term. We want to focus certainly this year on our investment and growth opportunities. 
just some quick financial bridges here. I won't spend too much time. You can see that the, the revenue stalled last year, and this was because the order intake was low in the first half of the year, and this prevented us from converting those into sales in the second half of the year. You can see the profit shortfall here. And that was all based on not having the orders to execute, carrying too much costs into the business. And then when the orders did come at the uh, fourth quarter of the year, it was too late to convert those into sales of the year. And he said that it does bode well for 2017 because we did start the year with a, a healthy order book. And the reasons for the strategic review, you can see there in the bottom, uh, bottom chart, the five-year revenue chart, overall the business just hasn't really developed over the last five years and the profitability has been reducing over that time. Whilst individual businesses have maybe doing quite well, the overall collection has just not been where we are. So what, what are we going to do about it? So the strategic review is fundamentally around bringing the business together. Previously, the company was operated as nine entities through four companies, more or less, two divisions, just too complex for the size of company we are today. But fundamentally, the businesses do similar things. We are selling engineered solutions to customers. We have to project manage that. We have to go through a procurement cycle, manufacturing assembly, factory acceptance test, site acceptance test. And all the business are basically doing the same thing. So the, uh, the, the idea is to work as one Molins, to uh, become a global entity rather than a collection of different businesses, reducing complexity, uh, being able to leverage our scale. In the make pack test scenario, so we can offer the customer the full solution and wrapping all that up into services. I'll come back to services probably a little bit later. But for me, that's a really untapped potential. At the moment, it's ad hoc. If the customer needs some spare parts, for sure we'll supply them. If they need a service technician, for sure we'll send one. But we don't embrace really the customer's need to guarantee uh, a high uptime of the investments that they make. The customer's looking for 98, 99% uptime on the equipment. And that requires a more contractual partnership on the service side of the business. So, where do we get the confidence that we're in the right markets from? Well, looking at the, uh, the markets that we currently serve, ph pharmaceutical, healthcare, food and beverage, you can see there the sort of compound average growth rates are in the three to five and a half percent. So these are fundamental growth markets. And if you look at the drivers on the, the right hand side there, there are, you know, you, you can see this in everyday life. I don't need to really probably explain them too much. But in Europe and uh, North America, the two factors that are driving this growth is premiumization, which is basically upselling of products, putting them in uh, you know, higher quality packaging, usually lower volume in higher quality packaging and selling at a premium. So that drives packaging machinery sales because these are usually lower volume, higher variety solutions, so that needs new equipment. And in Asia, South America and Africa, the, uh, the drive of the urbanization and convenience because people are migrating to the cities, food needs to be transported and stored. So again, packaging uh, equipment, but usually higher volume, more simple packaging. So the fundamental growth drivers are there. If we look at the nicotine delivery market, it's effect effectively flat, uh, probably declining in most of the markets outside of China. China's nearly 50% of the market, and that's a state-owned enterprise, so it's uh, pretty much inaccessible. Uh, as a growth driver going forward. The, uh, the, one of the issues there is the new products. You've probably heard about vaping, um, you know, heat not burn technologies. These are on the horizon and the big tobacco makers are moving towards the, the heat not burn technology, which is still fundamentally a tobacco based cigarette, but it's a different type of technology. So one of the things we need to consider as a business is, do we want to reinvest in another generation of machinery in a market that's uh, forecast to be declining further or just not growing. So the, the, the idea is that we want to put our investment and our energy into the pharmaceutical, healthcare and food and beverage, which are growth markets. This slide, probably a little bit complex and you please refer to your notes, but he's trying to illustrate the, the, the scope of the packaging solutions from process shipping through to secondary packaging. And the, the middle part of it is illustrating where we currently are in that. So we're not starting from scratch. This is not a new concept where we have to start to think, well, how are we going to address these markets? Within the different businesses, we have the elements that we can put together. 
the generic engineering solutions that we offer to our customers are applicable in the different markets. So what we have to do is really bring them together as one business and start to leverage that through cross-selling, through commercial excellence programs in the marketplace. And as I said before, underpinning it with a service offer, which today is uh, already something like 45% of our sales and a very good gross margin. And yet we're not really focused on it. There is an awful lot more we can do as a, as a business to embrace that part of the business. Just to give you a couple of ideas of case studies, you know, to show where we are with different uh, different products, I'll just concentrate on one because of time. But the one in the top left-hand corner there, this is an inhaler device for GSK. The the, uh, the challenge there was GSK was uh, having a, the, the, these come in a, a strip with indentations, and the inhale powder needs to be individually dosed in each of these indentations on a strip. And they were previously doing that by filling. Uh, immersing the strip in the powders, pulling the powder out and then cleaning it off and that had problems of a lot of waste, uh, leaving a lot of contamination on the strip so when they tried to seal it, it was, not, uh, it was not sealing very well. So we came up with a solution where we can dose individual pockets, 6,300 per minute with a, a very defined dose and then leave the strip completely clean, sealed and pop that into, into the right format for this device. That has led to 31 lines within GSK being installed over a period of time. So by getting in at the very start of a new concept, new project with the customer, you then have the opportunity to share with the, uh, the revenue over a long term. That's just one example I wanted to share with you. Coming back to the business review and the sort of conclusions that we came, we came to as a group, as the senior leadership, is the first thing on the market side of it. Our main competitors are larger in scale and offer a full solution. That was the, the number one learning I got is that these customers, uh, sorry, the competitors are going to the customer and talking about a full solution. So they get the upfront inquiry and are in pole position to offer a full solution. With our Langham business, we're the secondary packaging provider. So we're waiting. If we've got a good reputation with a customer, he may come to us because he knows we're a specialist in that area. But the original conversation is being had by somebody else. So it's fundamental to us to get further up the chain and in the initial inquiry with the customer. In the middle part, you can see there, I, I, my perception of moldings when I joined and I've been in the engineering world now for over 30 years, is it's a very engineering-led company. Uh, which led to long lead times, a lot of complexity, risk averse. We need, as a capital equipment company, to be more commercially focused, more market driven. I think that is fundamental to the, uh, the strategies that we're putting forward going, going forward. So, and that led to uh, inconsistent focus, inefficiencies, lack of scale, all the complexity that you have with trying to operate nine entities with their full scope of you know, finance, warehousing, logistics, assembly, engineering, all the different functions individually, suboptimal. So the, uh, the strategy going forward is on three pillars. The first one, going for growth. And this for me is the fundamental thing, to start moving the needle, to start uh, capturing more market share. As you saw earlier, these are very huge markets Cap the packaging machinery market in just in food and beverages 3.3 billion and our business is uh, very small 80 million so there is a huge opportunity here but what do we need to do we need to train our sales guys we need to upskill them we need to get them cross cross selling we need to focus on the regions the U US America's market European market and Asian market operate to different uh, uh, different fundamental drivers, so we need to recognize that, we need to embrace that. So going for growth is the primary thing to start moving the trajectory and growing in the markets where there is growth and we've been unable to participate up to now. Make service a business is a very, very key part of the strategy going forward and we've, you'll see in the organization chart, we are bringing somebody into the organization who has got the necessary skills to help us on that journey. And operational efficiency, the issue for us is to become more flexible um, and responsive to the customer's needs. In the capital equipment part of the business, when the investment cycle's got a, a strong tailwind, you need to be there to be able to capture the business 
And when the headwinds are coming, you need to be able to compress the costs. And I think one of the issues with modelings is we carried costs for far too long in the down cycles and then couldn't expand when the market uh, conditions improved. So creating a more flexible and responsive operational footprint is key to what we want to do as well. So we've already started the journey. The new organisation was in place from January the 1st. We did some right sizing last year in the packaging machinery part of the business. Uh, we now have to continue that in the tobacco side of the business. Part of that will be centralised services, shared back office to try to bring more of the business together, especially the non-customer facing activities. Moving into 2018, we need to leverage the commonalities. So this is really getting the one Molins new footprint to work together as one business, as opposed to the, the different businesses they operated before, and putting the, the necessary training, people development uh, capabilities. And then beyond that, uh, new product development will be a key part of that to make sure that we're developing the products to, to fill our full solution offer to the customers, filling in the gaps to make sure we've got the full customer proposition in the markets that we, we've identified. The new structure, I think I've already spoken a little bit about this. Key for me is that having the sales and service regional focus because those markets are different and we, we've got embedded businesses in the Americas, in Toronto and in Brazil. And we need to leverage those. They've been there for a long time. They know the markets. They know their customers. It's not something that we've just, uh, we've just happened across. The same in Asia. We've got a business in Singapore. We've got a business in Thailand and in India. We want to leverage those so we can really respond to the local market needs and the, and the, the local cultures. Coming on the horizontal, supporting that by a global operations and business development function, a global services business, and shared back office group services. So one operating model serving the three, the three regions uh, of the global markets. <coughs> We've already uh, started some work, as I said earlier, and what are the, the initial results? Well, the strategic review is completed, and I did say we, we involved the senior leadership throughout this. We've had three sessions, of about two to three days each time. July last year, we had another one in October, and we've had a third one in February. The first time, I think they've all been pulled together as a group. So that for me, there's real buy-in and enthusiasm around this. If you look at the, the next steps, we've already appointed a, a HR director. There's a, an awful lot of change going on in the business. This is not easy for people who've, who've not really changed for the last 10, 15 years. So the HR director we brought in specifically to help, first of all, the senior leadership team to uh, really embed and take on board the new message, but to work with the, the uh, sales team primarily, the other global functions. We've got a uh, service director we've offered a job to now. Uh, he's in his notice period. Hopefully he'll be on board 1st of July, and that will complete the senior management team. And just to touch on that last bullet point there, we've established KPIs for the business to, uh, to track this and monitor it and make sure the strategy is actually coming to life. And that's on three levels. The first thing is uh, around about 20 or so projects that we need to manage and make sure <coughs> happen to put the foundations in place. And then there's some things that we're calling momentum KPIs, which are monthly checks to make sure we are actually following the strategic intent, drawing in the markets that we think are um, where we have uh, the right products and the right focus, pharmaceutical, nutrition and beverage. And then finally, the business KPIs to make sure we're actually turning this into the right results going forward. So that brings me full circle. The outcome, we want to be a global leader in make path test and service solutions for the packaging industry, built on the three, three columns I explained before. I absolutely believe, having gone through this strategic review, that we, we are in attractive markets. We've, we've got a, an excellent portfolio of customers. I just showed you a few there, but below that, at the next level, there are 30 to 50 other customers that we want to try and elevate into these global key accounts. Tremendous array of engineering solutions and heritage that goes back over a hundred years that we need to we need to really harness and pull together as a, a full solution provider and very open and engaged people who seem to be positive and want to get on board with this. So, for me, the uh, the target growth over the strategic period is really our that's what we want to do as a baseline. Ten percent annual growth 
to build up scale of the business because we are quite small in what is fundamentally a huge market and return 10% to the bottom line, return on sales over that period as well.